everyone, it's Meredith with Soul Navigation and welcome back to my Sexy Seduction series where I give you techniques on how to seduce and make Gemini fall madly in love with you and never want to leave you. In this video, I'm going to show you the top 10 sexy seduction techniques to make your Gemini crave you, want you, devour you. Body, heart, mind, spirit, soul. How are we going to seduce this ever complicated sign, right? How are we going to ever convince them to never stop, never stop, <laughs> double negative, thinking about you? even while you're away from them. If you are so lucky to get a Gemini to settle down with you, you are so amazing. You are like the next prophet. <laughs> <laughs> created a miracle. So watch this video all the way through because at the tail end, I'm going to give you a couple bonus tips um, and bonus thoughts because it is very difficult to narrow down a Gemini into the top 10 because they have about 20 different things that actually seduce them. So let's start with this. I love starting with the aphrodisiac. Are you ready for this? I know you already know it, especially if you're involved with a Gemini. Gemini's aphrodisiac is mental gymnastics. The first thing you need to do as soon as possible, as soon as you meet your Gemini, is you have to be so quick and so fast in revealing how mentally stimulating and fascinating and witty and utterly brilliant you are at hello. Or if you are not quite that witty or, <laughs> or brilliant, then tell them that you think that they are exactly all of that. Clever communication is so, so sexy for a Gemini. Geminis get really bummed out because there are very few fellow earth creatures that can mentally and verbally keep up with them. And the world just feels too simple and too slow for them. If you're quick and fast and you can just jump through hoops, you know, the mental obstacle course that Gemini just loves. And if they can't kind of can't quite catch you, oh my God, first of all, they are in the treat of a lifetime. Second of all, they are going to be following you around trying to talk to you all night long. <laughs> They want someone who can keep up. So come on, people, keep up with your Geminis here. Keep up with your Geminis. They are so brainiac smart and funny and witty, but we'll get to that, okay? That's their aphrodisiac. So if you are that, you know, yippee yahoo, because they will love that. Okay, if you don't know who I am, I'm Meredith. I hope you'll go explore all of my videos. I have over 100 videos now, and uh, I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. So please become a subscriber. I'm so close. I'm almost there. And if you love this video, please leave a comment and let me know what you think. If you are a Gemini, I want to know if you think I got this right. Okay, let's go, because Geminis don't like going slow. They are already ready for me to say the next thing. Boom. Sexy seduction tip number one. Throw the rule book away. Be spontaneous. Rules are meant to be broken, right people? Yes, that's what Geminis think. Be spontaneous and be willing to make it up as you go. These people love that. And the book of rules does not work with Gemini. Nope. You need to act on your instincts, your impulses, and calculate the heart math between the two of you really, really fast. They like it quick and fast. I mean, sparks are flying. They like to see the chemistry really quick, really fast, up front, like right now, like, come on. There's not a lot of time to think here, people. So you need to process life at a faster pace than what is normal. And you need to be willing to flow in any direction imaginable. I will tell you, spontaneity is just so invigorating. And it's the elixir that they absolutely thrive off of. And they love it. They love unplanned adventures. They love unplanned tricks and surprises. They love to surprise you. They love to be surprised. If you can surprise your Gemini, oh my God, they will eat out of the palm of your hand. They will love that. Let me tell you a quick side story. So my dad, my beloved dad was a Gemini and I knew him really, really, really well. Um, he passed away when I was about 
38 years old. He taught me a lot about love. He taught me a lot about romance. He taught me a lot about men and life. Oh, he was just such a wise man. Uh, he taught me a lot about life, but he did talk to me pretty deeply about relationships. So when I was about, gosh, how old was I? I might've been 13 years old. He wanted to propose to a woman. He did propose to a woman. It didn't end up working. But what he had me do was he had me wrap this diamond ring in a tiny box, a tiny beautiful box. He had me wrap it in another box that was bigger and then another and then another and then another. And I wrapped each one and put a bow on it and another and another and another. And his girlfriend came to Christmas and at Christmas, she had this this like box under the Christmas tree that looked probably like a mini refrigerator, right? And she opened it up, probably thinking it was a microwave or like a little mini fridge, <laughs> only to find another box and another and another and another and another until she got down to this little box. And by the time she opened up this little box, she had tears in her eyes. It was really sweet. And he proposed to her, can you believe that? Right then and there at Christmas in front of everybody. It was the sweetest thing. Although it didn't work out in the long picture, it didn't work out. That's the kind of surprise Gemini loves to do. They love playing tricks on people. And if you can trick your Gemini, they will fall madly in love with you because they love the art of the surprise. So throw your Gemini the surprise birthday that they don't want, but they secretly do. So if you are kind of sick and tired of just doing the same thing, going to the same restaurants, you know, going to your same old traditional Olive Garden data Gemini, because with your Gemini, I guarantee you one thing, you will be kept on your toes and you will never get bored. That brings us to sexy seduction tip number two. Celebrate the connector in them. These people I call the spider web. Why? They like to weave the web or be the hub where everybody comes together and they like the interconnectedness of all the different facets of their life and all the different people in their life coming together. They like being the nucleus. So celebrate that they are the networker. Geminis are not really homebodies. And if they are, they're probably tackling the big project in the garage or they're learning their new trade or craft or they're socializing um, at their home or they're writing their new phenomenal book or they're doing something at home that is probably a craft, a project, learning something, studying something, writing a book, reading a book, doing a podcast, something that has communication inside of it. They have just this fascinating social life that they want you to join in on. And they also sometimes don't want you to join in on, but they love going places and exploring all of life. And they love new adventures wherever fun will lead them to. They don't want to live in your box. They don't even want to live in their own box. <laughs> they don't even want to live in a box, right? So they don't like living with four walls around them. They can't stand that. They have to have the roof off so they can fly out anytime they want. Their curiosity is just insatiable. They have this like unquenchable thirst. Like they, they can never quite get enough if you will. When you realize this about your Gemini, that they like to be, you know, out and about, and they like being a connector and a networker, and they love their social butterflies. They have a big social life and they like going places and having fun. And when you can allow them to have their adventures and explore their curiosity, exploring all of life with or without you, going here, there, and everywhere, and be totally understanding that they want to go out with you sometimes, but not all the time because they need to mix things up. And if you can truly know this about them, they will love you and appreciate you because nobody else can get this about them. So be different. Allow them to have all of their freedoms that they want because everybody else gets jealous and their feelings hurt. So it's like understand and help them quench their thirst for understanding life and for the world beyond themselves. And more than a social butterfly, if we were to go deeper about this, 
Geminis are truly, one of their core, core values is to be a connector. They love, love, love connecting people to other people and they are masterful at this. They are masterful networkers. So in order for them to fulfill a strong archetypal need inside of them, the connector, the networker, they need to be out and about. They love being the nucleus or the hub of very important, stimulating, smart, fun, activities. This leads me to seduction tip number three. Let them flirt with the world and don't be jealous. Geminis can be faithful. Believe it or not, I know it's hard to believe, but they love to flirt with life. They love, love, love this. They are the opposite sign of Sagittarius, but this is where these two signs are exactly alike. They flirt with the world. They make grandparents fall in love with them. They make a two-year-old never want to leave them. They know how to relate to teenagers. They know how to relate to, if they are a teenager, they know how to relate to um, middle-aged adults. It's crazy. They can cross the entire spectrum of any age and relate to people across the board. They flirt with life. They are so charming and endearing and such brilliant, masterful communicators that they can communicate with anyone, anywhere. And it makes people feel seen, heard, and known. And so because of that, the world can fall in love with them. So let them flirt with the world. Ask them why they find the bartender or the guy in the band or the waitress or whatever so fascinating and listen to them really carefully because they will tell you the truth. Know that these people will not be owned or possessed. So don't even try. Don't be jealous. Give them more room than you even want to. Give them more room than even they want to. And they will never leave you. Think of, they are like Mo's surgery. Have you ever had Mo's surgery before? Where, you know, you have the the sun, the skin cancer. It's like that big. They carve out the skin cancer and they leave you a margin. Yeah, give them more margin than what they want. That is the secret golden nugget. That is the the seduction tip number three. That is so, so, so critical. They will commit to a person who gives them more room, more margin, a bigger playground, free range, right? To explore the world. And they will be loyal to that person. There's nothing to rebel against. So be that person. It's almost like trust them. Now, I'm not saying be stupid, you know, that not every Gemini is faithful and they are definitely not a faithful sign if they feel reined in, hemmed in, boxed in. Okay, now, if you are wondering if you are compatible with your Gemini, you can order a love and relationship compatibility report. Just scroll down to the notes section below and you can order this report. It is like one of the best on the market. It is so fantastic. It is really, really good if you have your birth time and their birth time. It's even better, not just your birthdays and birth year and place. I have some specials and I have some special packages that you can get, but it is so worth it. This report is so phenomenal. It's so in-depth and the reason why it is so special and it is so good is because it shows you the relationship from their perspective. So you get to see how they think and feel about you and how they perceive you. And then it also shows how you perceive them. So it's just, it's going to knock your socks off. It is so, so good. So just scroll on down, go to my online scheduler. You can see all the reports that I do. Also, if you want a natal chart, it's on there and um, they're just gorgeous. But that report is so, so good. You'll love it. Okay, seduction tip number four, be a master communicator. Geminis are so clever, so be a clever communicator. You know, notice the absurd. They love that. They are kind of quirky, kinky. They love the absurd. They love the ironic. They love seeing the truth and the humor. They love slicing and dicing and organizing words and mixing and matching. They love conundrums. They love puzzles, like word puzzles. They love puns. They love double entendre. Can you do all that? They love any kind of like word game. So like find the word. I forget what that's called. They love crosswords. They even are good at Sudoku. They love words with friends. Oh my God. Turn them on and seduce them with a nice Scrabble game. (laughs) This is the only sign that like you can play Scrabble as foreplay. (laughs) 
oh my God, hi, do you want to play Words with Friends with me? And they'll be like, well, I don't know if you can keep up because my score is 1060. And you're thinking, oh my God, I'm a 200. I'm going to have to download the cheat guide. <laughs> Anyways, when you go out, I want you to be a master communicator. And part of being a master communicator is being a really, really good listener. They don't like being inter interrupted. They've got a thousand details to tell you. They may truly be the only person on the entire planet that is interested in what you have to say. So Libra is a close second, but this is also really important if your person is a Gemini rising, a Gemini moon sign, or has a lot of planets in the third house. Anybody who has a, let's say you have a Sagittarius, but they've got five planets in the third house, this applies. So I am speaking not of a sun sign, although this is a good video to watch if you are dating just a Gemini, but I'm really speaking about in this video when somebody's Mars is in Gemini or their Mars is in the third house or their third house is packed out. Just know there's a lot of ways to um, see your sexuality in a chart. But today I'm really talking about those people who have Mars in Gemini or a lot of planets in the third house. And then secondarily, I know you'll get a lot out of this if you are a Gemini rising, a Gemini moon, or if you have even like your Venus in Gemini or you are a Gemini. Let's go back to the master communicator. You know, Gemini is going to ask you a lot of questions. And on the first date, you might even feel like it's an interview. You actually might feel like your whole life is an interview. <laughs> you know, when I was, I'm going to talk about my dad a lot in this video because he is, uh, I've never been been personally, I should say romantically involved with the Gemini, but um, my sister is a Gemini and uh, my dad was a Gemini and my dad just taught me so much about uh, love and life and he was such a zany person at times but also such a serious serious intellect I'll tell you more about him later but what's so interesting is when I was in um, second grade I was seven years old he used to read Dr. Seuss to me in bed and he would come in with a giant towel wrapped around his head and it would be like a turban right and he would sneak into bed with me and tuck me in and we would read Dr. Seuss but at the end of the Dr. Seuss book he would always close the book whether it was green eggs and ham or oh the places will go and he would say Mary what do you think the meaning of life is or Mary let's talk to God tonight or Mary why do you think you were born or Mary where is God and he would and I would be like oh dad quit being funny uh well now <laughs> at my age I realized he wasn't actually being funny he was being very very real those questions were the actual reasons why he was reading Dr. Seuss to me. Dr. Seuss was just the prelude to the real questions and the real tuck-ins, like the real conversation. I did happen to have a really good dad. It's really sweet. So let's go back to this, okay? I got some notes here that I'm kind of taking a little peek at. Mastering the art of communication is so important to them. And you know, they love a good debate but they don't like a good debate with a really emotional person or with a person who is so fixated on their point that they can't have a fluidity, that they can't bend and twist and think high and low and put objectivity into the conversation. They really do need objectivity. And if you are not an objective thinker, if you are, um, you know, kind of a, a staunch advocate for one way and black and white and one way only, they, they will hate this. And if you fall apart to tears, you know, they like a good debate and are not looking for an argument and they don't see a debate as an argument. So they could drive you nuts because you might feel like they're constantly arguing. Well, that's just a debate for them. They have a mental skill set that is built for debating ideas and concepts. They like shattering or obliterating, you know, theories and thoughts. They love having this skill set and they like to sharpen it. They love using this skill set. And if you are fluent in more than one language, you need to tell them right away because they will be in utter awe of you. And if you love communicating, if you love learning, I would really love it if you would follow me on my Instagram account at soul underscore navigation, because now I'm posting little tiny miniature five minute, two minute, seven minute videos almost daily, like every other day with all 
different aspects about astrology and life. And I think you will learn so much and you will get so much out of it. So come over to Instagram and follow me. If you are a Gemini, I'm sure you're on social. And if you're involved with a Gemini, you need to be on social. <laughs> Seduction tip number five. You already know this one. Don't be boring. My God, do not be boring. Boredom is the death of Gemini. If you ever killed a Gemini, it's because they thought you were boring. If a if a Gemini never took you out on a second date, I guarantee you they had the foresight that you were going to settle them down and deliver them a long, steady, slow dose of serious boredom. <laughs> Are you a boring person? Are you a simpleton that just doesn't like new things, doesn't like new challenges, and just is so stuck in your way that you don't really want to get out of your traditions and your box and try anything new? If so, then Gemini, you probably save yourself. Go watch my Everything Gemini video after this. And uh, I talk about it in great detail. They don't really have ADD. They just look like they have ADD because they're interested in everything. You need to be versatile and forever changing and do different things each day. Have new identities. Show up one day, you know, as looking like Madonna and the next day Liz Taylor and then the next day the Joker. <laughs> Hi, honey, you came home. <laughs> They'll be like, what? what the hell? If it if it's smart, if it's a little bit of a smarter facade, it works better. But that will work too, because they are really playful. And they do actually love practical jokes and surprises, as you know. They've got their fingers in a hundred different honey pots, and they are curious and excited, and they love to explore life. And when they come home to announce that they're doing this like brand new thing, you are sitting there thinking, oh my God. God, are they going to mortgage the house? Oh my God, are we going to lose everything we've ever had? Oh my God, they just bet the whole house at the <laughs> on their new entrepreneurship. Oh my God, they're opening up, you know, they want to be um, like a kayaking guide in the glaciers of Alaska. Oh my God. Okay. You know, don't freak out. Just celebrate their new life change or their new project or their new pursuit. Because chances are, if you celebrate it with them and you flush out all the ideas and all the pros and cons, by morning time, they will not even have a passion for doing it anymore. <laughs> they won't. The, they are so funny. It's like, if you're like, oh, that's a brilliant idea and you should do that. And I totally support it. And this is what you could do. And this is what you could do. And this is what you could do. I guarantee you by morning, they're not that interested in it. <laughs> All things and all ideas and even friendships and people and maybe even you, they swap out. They can run through their obstacle course of being interested and staying interested really, 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 really fast. They run on high voltage, super fast energy and they can process through dream after dream after dream after dream really fast. They don't even have to live them all out. They can do it all in their head and know exactly how uh, it's going to go or not go. And uh, so a lot of it is just a game in the mind for them. So just don't squash their dreams, you know, help them expand their ideas and concepts and dreams. Be willing to, to allow them to share their big, fancy, smart, fabulous ideas with you and know that they probably will change that idea by the time you pour the coffee in the morning. <laughs> My dad, when we were growing up, things were always changing with him. And he made life so interesting and so big and so fun. He grew up in Chicago where I lived until I was two years old. And then we moved to Tucson, Arizona, and we lived on a ranch. And he worked with Native Americans on an Indian reservation, helping them with really deal with depression and alcohol. And then uh, we moved to Phoenix, Arizona, and he became an air traffic controller. Then he moved to Oklahoma City, then Los Angeles and lived on the beach. Um, and then he joined the United Nations and he moved to Montreal, Canada. And we went to all of these places and I spent my summers in, in all of these places. And he traveled around the world in remote parts building as a project manager, if you will, airports in third world countries through the UN. And so he lived as a diplomat later in his life. And then he lived in Bangkok, Thailand for 10 years, Cambodia for three years. And the last place he had lived was in Iraq. And then when he passed away, he was in Phoenix. So what's interesting about that is the many faces of his life, right? 
the many chapters, the many jobs. He drove a taxi. He was in the Vietnam War. He worked as a remote air traffic controller in the Vietnam War and then worked with the UN. And I mean, this guy could do just about everything. He could lay the concrete down to build a patio. He could negotiate with the Cambodian government, the Thai officials. And so Geminis are very, very, very versatile. And they like partners that can go along with their versatility. Now, if you're super versatile like that and they're super versatile like that, then there's no glue. They do kind of need a steady anchor, but someone who's willing to play at the game or their game of life, right? And go along with them and also have enough of an identity where you stay fascinating to have a conversation with at night. Seduction tip number six, be childlike, be fun and lighthearted. These are the Peter Pan of the Zodiac and appreciate that part of them at their best. Geminis are super lighthearted and funny and witty and carefree and charming and entertaining and childlike, like Marilyn Monroe. She was a Gemini. And be all those fun things. They love having their feet up off the ground. So do anything that requires that, like swinging on a swing set, or flying in a plane, or riding a bike, or jumping on a trampoline. They love, love, love surprises like a big kid. They love pranks. They love creating parties with lots of different interesting people. My dad used to have UN dinner parties with people from all walks of life. And it seemed like he always liked to invite a couple oddballs just to make it really super interesting and memorable. And, you know, Geminis like to laugh and poke fun and tease each other, just like we're back in like high school or junior high, like a big kid would do. So kind of like witty, funny, teasing and bantering back and forth. They absolutely love that. If you don't know where your planets are, you don't know if you have Mars and Gemini, you should hop on over to my online scheduler. Just go down to the notes section below and click on the link there. Go to my online scheduler and just buy, I think it's $12, it's barely anything, and I make them so gorgeous, so simple, easy to read. It's all color-coded with sign and house, like all the water signs are one color, all the fire signs are one color, all that, so it's super beautiful and so, so easy to read with all the degrees around the whole circle. It has keys so you can read all the glyphs and um, it's just incredible. My natal charts are absolutely the most beautiful on the market, just go over and get one so you can know where all your planets are. You can know where your Venus is, your moon is, your Mercury. You need to know all that because we're doing the deep dive on your soul. Seduction tip number seven. Understand that they are ambivalent by nature. They probably don't even know if they really like you and be okay with it. You, you know, it's like if you don't need them to know, the chances that they will come to like you will significantly increase. Geminis don't always know what they want. They don't always know what they need. And that's because they are expert analyzers. They love to dissect the minutia and they can totally see the cause and effect of outcomes. They will assess both sides of a situation, not knowing really which side is best or which side they genuinely want. So when you tell them what is best for them, they will almost 100% of the time go the other direction. So if you tell them, no, I think you really want Chinese food tonight, and you list out all the reasons why they want Chinese food, they're thinking, oh my God, I actually really want Italian. Oh, okay, so you want Italian food. Let's go get Italian. No, I don't want that many calories. Ooh, I better go back to Chinese food because we could get low fat soup. Okay, let's go back to Chinese food. Yeah, but you know, I haven't had mama's red sauce in so long. I really want the Italian food. Oh my God. How you get them out of ambivalence is you be more ambivalent than them. You be more ambivalent than them. You go, God, that's such a weighted problem. I can see how Chinese would be so good and I can see how yummy Italian sounds. Hmm, hmm, I just don't know what I want. Hmm, I don't know. Chinese, Italian, Chinese, Italian. Hmm, huh, the house on the river or the house in the forest? Hmm, hmm, I don't know. And you do not make up their mind for them because if you make up their mind for them, they're going to see that the other thing, so if you pick the house by the river, they're gonna talk and think and obsess about how they want the house in the forest. Know that they are like this, accept this about them, and do not talk these people out of their ambivalence because they will never get unambivalent if you do that. If you tell them Italian food, they will want Chinese. If you tell them Chinese, they will want Italian. So don't tell them to like you and don't tell them not to like you. Just be massively more confused 
than they are. <laughs> so if you're massively more confused than they are, I guarantee you they will pick a side. Do not be crushed by this. I know a lot of people, including myself, where I have been crushed by this. Do not be crushed by this. This has nothing to do with you. This has to do with their processor inside of them. And I know it can be heart crushing, but it's not about them rejecting you. It's about them being comfortable enough to even make a decision or take a side or stand decisively in a risk. And when you meet a Gemini who has not yet developed their self-confidence, they are not good at this. They are plagued, try this on, okay? They are plagued with the feeling of standing at a fork in the road. And they literally don't know which way to go. And if you choose this way, they're going to obsess about this way because they see a choice as closing off opportunities. They don't see making a choice and standing in that choice decisively as, oh, all the opportunities. No, they focus on all these opportunities that they're going to miss out on because they like having their finger in all kinds of honey pots. And I don't mean that sexually. Although it can mean that, I don't mean that. I just mean they don't want options and opportunities to be gone or missing or left. They want to explore this one and this one. They sometimes on mega life decisions literally have to flip a coin and say a prayer. They get trapped inside of the analytics of choices and they can become at their worst selves paralyzed. They will either die by boredom or die by paralysis. It's true. This wasn't supposed to be a heavy video, right? Lighthearted Gemini. But they run on nervous energy and they are so fearful of making a move in case it's a wrong move. And they get strangled, um, boxed in too tightly, hemmed in, reined in, and those options are forever missing. And they are very, very frightened of that. So make them feel like, hey, the world is your oyster. You can have it all. Why don't you go back to school at night and do your corporate job? Hey, why don't you open up your entrepreneurial company and work your other job? Hey, why don't you be a bartender and the CEO? So don't try to remove their nervousness either. Help them instead to channel that nervousness and that anxiety into fun, sexy activities. By trying new things and, and not diminishing their nervous energy, but channeling their nervous energy into vigorous activity or super fun, sexy times where their nervousness can kind of bubble up, the more calm they'll become. So it's kind of like, it's a good thing if they are sexually nervous with you. It's actually a good thing. It means they care. It means they're in it. If they're just super calm, yawning, uh, bored, <laughs> you need to keep it spicy. Okay, and that leads us to our sexy seduction tip number eight. Be experimental and non-judgmental sexually. So these people are high voltage, electric, electrically sexually charged people. They have tons of electricity in their energy. So you want to also remember the sexy seduction tip before you want to talk dirty to them. You want to tell them what you're going to do to them in the morning for the evening. So their mind is just thinking about you, obsessing about you all day long. You want to do the communication tease. You want to leave them a voicemail or whisper in their ear at a party about how sexy they are, about, oh my gosh, those stockings on you look so good. Or you want to point out somebody else, like what their outfit would look like on them. You got to keep them thinking. You got to keep their minds going. You want to text them a one picture emoji without a lot of explanation, right? And you also want to be able and willing and you want to be able to flow with trying new things all the time. Um, this is the sign I will tell you if you have Mars in Gemini, you could experience some sort of bisexuality or some sort of unique sexual expression. I don't know, you could be a furry, you know, <laughs> I just learned about furries. Anyways, if I have a furry and you don't mind coming out, please uh, write to me below and let me know. Do you like being a furry? Is it fun being a furry? Is your partner a furry? I want to know <laughs> because in, if, and, if, and do you have Mars in, in Gemini? Because Mars in Gemini is willing to try kind of everything. It doesn't mean that you are bisexual if you have Mars and Gemini, but I have seen that a lot of bisexuality um, or homosexuality even is expressed through Mars and Gemini. You know, they have very fine motor skills. So Mars and Gemini is usually a very, very good 
a lever. They're like a mechanic, you know, they're like an engineer. They know where all the bells and whistles are and they give great massages and they usually have very beautiful voices. So if they can talk to you while they give you a massage, oh my gosh, sign up for one of them things. <laughs> but I will tell you, I don't recommend you asking about their past partners. Why? Because you can't handle it. <laughs> Unless you're a Gemini or you have a lot of Gemini or you're a packed third house or you have a Gemini moon or a Gemini Mercury or Gemini rising or something. Don't ask them because they've been places, people. <laughs> they've probably been places that uh, you don't want to know about if they have Mars and Gemini. So let them keep their own secrets and don't demand to know because I'm telling you right now, they are very experimental and who they once were is not who they are necessarily with you right now. These people can really change their personas, their appetites, and their interests. They could have been, you know, I don't know, in a motorcycle club with all them people, and now they're running the junior league. I'm not joking. So they really do change their persona. They change their their look and um, their modality and their, their sexual nature and their sexual ap appetite can evolve and devolve. <laughs> it can really metamorphose into new ways of being and who they once were is not necessarily who you're getting right now. So let the past be the past. And they like to talk about sex a lot. They're very open-minded. So have communication and conversations about love and romance and life and sex and preferences. And uh, they're very objective. Seduction tip number nine. Are you ready? Be a high achiever. Geminis are more motivated than the average bear. They like to achieve and they're pretty darn hard on themselves um, when what they strive for, they don't reach. Um, they feel like they can, and they pretty much can do anything they set their minds to. They will seem to you like they're good at every single darn thing in the whole wide world. You know, it's like they can do it all. They can they can go to the Oscars. They can dig a anthropology ditch uh, for dinosaur bones. They can go to the, the gala in the morning and go snowboarding at night. They can work, you know, in the, the homeless camps and tent city. And then they can be dressed to the nines to go to, I don't know, the Met Ball. They can love opera and ballet and then go to a punk rock concert. And they're probably the singer in the punk rock band. They can be a doctor during the day. And then at night, they can be a cook or a chef. Um, so they're just so versatile like that. But they really are seduced by smart people. They're seduced by high achievers. They're seduced by the eternal learner. They love people who want to learn, learn, learn. And I'll tell you, um, my cousin gave my mother the nicest compliment. And I thought it sounded like a Gemini compliment. And I'll tell you what it was. If you ever get this compliment by a Gemini, God, it means the world. It is simply like the nicest thing you could say to someone, or I should say it means the most when a Gemini compliments you this way. My cousin said to my mother over uh, Christmas dinner, the thing I love about you is you're 73 years old and you've stayed relevant. You've stayed relevant. She keeps up with the times. She wears the clothes of today. She um, understands the humor of today. She understands politics of today. She understands the millennial mind. She understands um, the Gen Z mind. She understands life as it is played out in 2020. And that's pretty cool because as we age, we don't always stay with the times. You know, we have our, our kind of we impose our way onto the world where she's getting the next iPhone and she, <laughs> I mean, she's not playing, uh, mine, Minecraft, <laughs> but she watches her grandkids play it. So staying relevant is really important. And it is sort of an ambition if you think about it. So when I say be ambitious, staying relevant, especially as we age, is ambitious. If you're not ambitious, if you're not chronically constantly learning or growing, they are going to feel like they're running circles around you. They're going to feel like they're running the show and they are the advisor and the guru and the wise one chronically and constantly. And that's not fun, right? So be full of thought. Another way of saying that is be thoughtful. Be really thoughtful and be a think tank and be ambitious. Put risky, ambitious goals in front of you and your Gemini will be so seduced by that. 
they will never want to leave you. Bring big goals to their intimate life and just to their life. I remember, you know, intimately, I'll just say, I have this darling, darling Gemini friend. And she told me a long time ago, you know, <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago, her and her lover created um, Thursday Afternoon Delights, where they experimented with all new locations on Thursday afternoons. If it didn't make sense, it was even better. And I'm talking about, you know, in the forest or on the home plate uh, at the baseball field or on the back of the boat. And, you know, they did crazy zany things like drink beer and eat ice cream in bed. <laughs> And it was so fun and it made me realize how boring I was. <laughs> Be a high achiever in the bedroom and in the world because they like masterful, masterful hands and ideas and techniques and versatility. Okay, seduction tip number 10, splurge and let them splurge. You know, part of their impulsive personality is purchase whatever they want whenever they want it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like rules, like, you know, following all the rules. So they love adventures and they love spending money because spending money is an adventure. So they love spontaneous purchases. Um, and that's pretty much their middle name. <laughs> <laughs> they are so generous. I mean, they are really, really generous with you. Like a big kid, you know, and they love presents. And if they love you, they will surprise you with purchases. So like they're the kind of parent or I don't know, they're the kind of gift giver, husband or parent or wife that will, you know, <laughs> have the big bow on the car in the driveway waiting for you as happy birthday or, you know, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas. Here's your new car. Woo. Yeah, this is not me. <laughs> I'm not buying you the car with the big bow on it. But Gemini's will do crazy as shit like that. Like they'll go out and buy the boat. Like let's buy a boat, honey. Okay. <laughs> So be generous with them. Buy them party favors and little outfits to wear and always arrive with a little something that says, try me, try me, try this. Hey, have you ever tried this before? That's one of their favorite things is, hey, have you ever tried this before? And you can really seduce them that way. So like bring them a scented candle or a party favor or toy or some little tiny new trick. So if you want more really fun, good little tips on a daily basis, don't forget to go follow me on my Instagram at soul underscore navigation. You can also find me on my Facebook where I do a lot of live feeds and I take questions um, on my soul navigation Facebook page. So I hope you'll go over there and be a subscriber for me here. Help me get to 10,000 by January 31st. I am so, so close. And thank you. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed, but ring the little bell. I upload content every single Sunday at 9 30 in the morning just remember Sundays with soul navigation and I'm trying to do more videos on the upcoming transits because we know that 2020 is a really big year so if you're watching this video in hindsight hopefully I'm already at 10,000 subscribers by the time you watch if you're watching this in the future so I want to say this Gemini's the very special note because it's hard to talk about such a charming and um, such a diverse and versatile sign and put it uh, all compact in one little note. And I didn't give you the basics like, oh, Gemini is an air sign and it's ruled by Mercury. I mean, I'm figuring you already know that, right? But it is ruled by Mercury, which is our communication planet. So a lot of the energy is up here. So when you are trying to seduce your Gemini, I want you to remember most of their energy is electric. It's super impulsive. It's very fast. It's lighthearted. It processes at a very quick speed and it's all up here. Their aphrodisiac is right here. Remember, it's mental gymnastics. And so this is the place where you are targeting. Yep. A couple little bonus golden juicy yummy nuggets for you is Gemini's love being fair. They would make a phenomenal juror, I swear, because they are so objective and they see all sides of an equation. They can talk to anybody and they are probably one of the, maybe the most open-minded people of the Zodiac. So talk about the taboo. I'm not joking. This is how you get a Gemini to want to devour you. Talk about the taboo with them. Go where angels fear to tread like a good Scorpio. 
they kind of are like that, where they like to be gutsy inside conversation. They like to take risks inside communication. If you can sing, sing to them. If you can play music, play music for them. If they play music, or if they can pick a guitar, or if they can sing, make them sing to you. I'm not kidding. My sister, my beloved sister, who is a Gemini, when she was a little girl, she used to spend her summers with me. And um, my God, I, I mean, she is a phenomenal nurse. She, she was born to be a doctor, but the real truth is, is she's born to be a singer. <laughs> <laughs> she is so incredible. Remember that song um, by Outcast? God, she used to she used to have every single word of that song of those songs memorized um, by Outcast. She knew every single word to every single song. She still probably does. And she was like eight years old. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. She was such a fast fast mental processor. Know that you can take your Gemini anywhere in the world to the Oscars or to an ashram in Israel and you probably should. They also are the eternal juggler. That's why they're not the most faithful sign but if you're fascinating, good to them and interesting, they will and can be faithful to you especially if they have a lot of Cancer or Taurus in their charts which oftentimes they do because those signs are so close to them. They bookend them. So they are the eternal juggler though, where they like to swap out their events and their activities and their times and their people and their places and their ideas. And you know, if they get a better offer, they really might fib to you because they don't like hurting your feelings and they'll go do the better offer. They're oftentimes late because they've got way too many things on their place. Don't be mad at them. They're just doing them, right? Don't be mad at them and don't get your feelings hurt. God, that's so annoying, especially if they swapped you out for something else that they would rather done. And if they've told you that, if they've been honest, like, mm, I'd like to come over to your house tonight and Netflix and chill. But you know what? Oh my gosh, Trevor Noah is at the Tacoma Dome tonight and I'm dying to go see him. God, is he a Gemini? He should be a Gemini. Will somebody look that up for me? I think Trevor Noah has got to be a Gemini. Maybe he's not a Gemini, but he's got a big third house if he's not, or he's got a Gemini moon or Gemini rising. Somebody check that out for me. I want to know because he is sort of the quintessential energy that I'm talking about. How would you seduce Trevor Noah? You would be so friggin' smart and funny. Smart and funny mixed together creates fireworks for a Gemini. Oh my God. If Trevor Noah said, Meredith, I would love to come over and eat your spinach casserole tonight, but you know what? Ah, God, I got this big interview that I'm just dying to do with George Clooney tonight and he swapped me out. I'd pretty much get it. I don't blame him. <laughs> if he gets a better offer, you know what? I get you. You go knock your socks off with George Clooney. You and George have a great time and let me know how it goes. That is one of the biggest seduction techniques I can give you. That's sort of like the golden, yummy, nugget, juicy fruit. <laughs> Because when you accept them and you accept the fact that, hey, you know, you might not want to be with me tonight. I might not rock your boat. I guess I should say float your boat. I might not excite you to the degree that you want to be excited tonight. So I get it. You go do you. I'll do me. They will fall madly in love with you. They will want to ravish you and be with you forever. Don't get your feelings hurt with your Gemini. God, they cannot handle it. They can't deal with it. It's just like they don't even mean to hurt your feelings. They just are so enthusiastic like a Sagittarius about life that sometimes they forget you. Whoops. <laughs> Just wait it out because they don't mean it in a bad way, but it's almost like they can't help themselves because life is exciting and they feel like I'm not going to get this opportunity again. And I want to just go do it. I want to go do it. I want to go ex experience it. I want to try it. I want to try it. They'll be back. Trust me. They'll be back. Whatever you do, do not try to capture them. These people are built for free range. So if you are a Gemini, Gemini moon, Gemini rising, pack third house, or if you don't know, go order a natal chart for me. You will love, love, love it. I'll email it to you just as soon as possible. Hopefully you have your birth time. If you don't, it's okay. We can still manage. We don't, don't. We don't love it, but we'll deal. If you are involved with a Gemini or you are a Gemini, please, will you share below? Because everybody learns from comments and we're going to build the most fabulous, smart, 
Gemini community here. So let's banter, let's talk and share because everybody can learn from a good Gemini who leaves a great comment below. Let me know if you feel like this was accurate and right. And I hope you'll go check out all my other videos. I've got just a couple more in this series to do. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, my series is done. We're almost to the end. And I hope, hope, hope that you are so happy. And if you have any questions about Gemini, leave them down below in the notes section and I will get back to, I try to answer every single question. I have a super big practice. So if I don't get to your question, don't get your feelings hurt, just write me again and I will try my very best. I hope you're wonderful from my house to yours. Here's to you and happy, happy Geminis. Mm -hmm.